This video is brought to you by Samsung and there is going to be a huge giveaway in this video so stay tuned for that but more on that later. So these behind me are the Poke R700s and they are gigantic speakers but also one hell of a speaker. And dare I say, I don't like to use the word but they are really setting the standards for the best under $2,000 speakers in the world. And I don't say that lightly whatsoever. Poke has come a long way. Usually when people say Poke, you don't associate with super high-end stuff. But recently they released the Reserve series, including the R200 that I reviewed recently. And these line of speakers are just flat out insane in terms of value. Now, initially I thought the R200 was insane in value, the bookshelf, until I heard the R700s. These are incredible. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the sound quality straight on, first of all, and then second of all, we're gonna talk about the build quality and some of the gear matching and positioning of the speakers to make it sound the best. And of course, in this video, we're gonna talk about that giveaway somewhere in the video, so stay tuned for that. So, I have to say though, I don't know where they cut the cost because this thing is just fantastically built and it sounds fantastic. But again, hold off on the build because that will surprise you quite a bit. But let's talk about the sound quality first because I think that's what everyone wants to know. And this speaker really deserves the attention of its sound quality because I thought the R200 sounded really, really good. And to some degree, the R200 is better than this in, in some aspects, and we'll talk about that. But the R700, the first thing you'll notice is the massive size and the air that it moves is just crazy. What essentially air movement means is that because the speaker is such a big speaker with gigantic drivers that is pushing a lot of air, it has a lot of pressure that is coming out. And that pressure, you feel it in your chest. And for a speaker at this price range that is able to really make you feel it in the chest, punch and dynamics, that is kind of unheard of at to, to this degree. Now there have been bookshelf speakers and floor standards in the past in this price range that has gotten very close. But this, this is not close. This is it in terms of bass. In terms of bass, it is right up there with like some of the high end speaker systems that really rumbles your soul and makes you feel the bass rather than being just heard. In fact, I'll go for us to say, you don't even need a subwoofer with these speakers. It has a lot of bass. Now, you may think that maybe it has too much bass for a small room, but we'll talk more about that later because you'll be quite pleasantly surprised by the technology this speaker brings to the table to allow you to have the speaker in such a small room. But I'll leave that as a teaser for now. Now, often when I listen to speakers, I have to be critical because that's what I do. I depict small differences. And with comparison to really high-end speakers, like for example, Wilson Audio, Focal, Magico, and so on and so forth, you may find the bass to be less textured and less detailed and more smeared in comparison to the higher-end speakers. But the Poke R700 does not really falter in terms of the quality and control. Meaning, yes, you may not feel the texture and the things that nuances in the bass region that audiophiles may talk about, such as myself, but let's face it, in terms of control, this speaker does, doesn't get boomy, doesn't get muddy, doesn't seem floppy. The bass is tight and it extends low at the same time. Often when I describe bass, I describe it in two different ways, especially on bookshelf speakers. Either it's a linear extension into the bass region, or it has a mid-bass emphasis to mimic a floor standing experience. In this case, you get both. And you heard me right, you get slam and punch with these speakers that will shake your skull. However, you also get extension that is pressurizing your room at the same time. So other than nitpicking that little bit of less texture and nuance in the bass that some audiophiles like myself talk about, the bass is phenomenal and they've done an extremely good job with the bass, especially when it comes to placement. Again, a teaser there. Now, 
When it comes to the mid-range, the mid-range is decent. It is linear, it's well balanced with the rest of the frequency, and that's what I like to hear. The overall tone in terms of female vocal, male vocal, instrumentals, is on the warmer side of neutral in my opinion. Because of that bass emphasis, it does give out a little bit of that chestiness, and a little bit of that warmer tone to the overall mid-range, which is nice. It doesn't seem analytical. It does not pierce my ears at any point. It doesn't have vocal sibilance, and it is pretty neutral all over the board, which really allows me to enjoy the mid-range on the speaker without too much of a concern. The only thing that does bother me as an audiophile, again, being very critical here that the mid-range, again, is not as detailed or nuanced as higher-end speakers. Again, very nitpicky here because this speaker presents itself and looks the part despite its price range. In fact, even before looking at the price, hearing these speakers, I was not expecting the speaker to be this price. And quickly talking about price, right now Crutchfield is having a promotion which you can get these on sale. And they do go on sale quite frequently, which means that you just, you can get it, you can get this speaker for cheap. Cheap. For what it is, cheap. And I can't emphasize this enough. You may be asking how does it compare to this, for example, the Kalich Model 5 or Bucard, etc. etc. But it's like comparing oranges to apples because none of the speakers, including the Model 5 and the Bacard S400 Mark II, does bass like these. Let's face it, sometimes there is no replacement for displacement. Which means that the bigger the size of a speaker, the bigger of a scale you get. And especially this is true when it comes to the bass region. Because these are big speakers, they're able to do bass effortlessly in comparison to the other counterparts. Now the Polk R700 does fall a little bit short when compared to other speakers that concentrate more on mid-range and high frequency refinement and detail retrieval and nuances. So if bass and dynamics is important to you and your dream speakers were like Wilson Audio and Focals, well, here you have it, minus the mid-range and the high frequency. I'll go for us to say that. So essentially what you get is a very strong bass presence, meaty, really good rumble and punch that is resemblance of you know really high-end speakers, which is ridiculous at this price point, and a mid-range and high frequency that is decent. Not great, but decent enough for you to enjoy any type of music. And yes, I do consider this an all-rounder speaker in terms of musical enjoyment because of how well balanced all the frequencies are. And again, the scale is what impresses me the most because when you hear a floor standard of this size, these are bigger than Wilson Audio Sabrina's. These are bigger than many of the speakers in here. Uh, Correction, they are the biggest speakers in here. The last time I heard a scale of this size was something like the Klipsch Cornwalls that was in here. And these have more bass than those. And what I mean by scale is the size, the size of the sound, the full scale of sound that hits you is different. Think about it this way. Now this is funny, but like imagine like a small person, like for example myself, versus a much larger person projecting sound, just screaming, like, ah, we would have different projections, of, like the scale will be different. The guy who is bigger than me will have more output, given that both of us are vocally trained and all that, but you get the point. The scale that comes out of an instrument that is bigger is much different from a smaller sized instrument. And it goes the same way for speakers. That's why when you hear big systems in the high-end world with big speakers, you get a scale that is just, you can't describe quite what it is, but it's better. That's what we describe as scale in most cases. So even in comparison to the little brother, the R200 bookshelf speakers, these obviously have more scale. That's what you get with these speakers. However, again, the R200 does have a little bit better mid-range and high frequency refinement just because it's a bookshelf speaker and because it's a simple two-way design. Whereas this is more a complicated design, a three-way design. But the difference is subtle. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough of a difference that most people will be able to pick up on. 
Now when it comes to soundstage and imaging, again comparing it to the Bookshelf R200, the R200 is a bookshelf speaker so it has better imaging focus and a wider soundstage. These do have a similar soundstage but the imaging compartment is slightly compromised. Meaning, yes, you do get a very center image, meaning if I record my voice, you shouldn't be hearing my voice a little bit to the left or to the right channel, but dead center in your room. Speakers should disappear. And these do do that. However, in terms of other categories of imaging, which means like, for example, instruments playing to the left and a guy singing to the right, you're not really able to depict exactly where they are. When in busy tracks like classical music, for example, things do get cluttered a little bit to the point where you can't quite grasp every instrumentals in the region, where they are. However, if you're not listening for those things, if you're just enjoying the music as an entirety, then these shouldn't matter to you. But if you're an audiophile, an avid audiophile, who likes detail, who likes nuances, who likes imaging, then these are not it in that compartment. So that's it in terms of sound. If you have questions about the sound quality, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but we're gonna move into build quality. But before that, let's talk about the giveaway. So I am going to be giving away these gigantic R700 speakers and an entire system that goes with it. So with this, I'm going to be giving away the Dodge 10 integrated tube amplifier that goes perfectly with the R700 in my opinion. The Dodge 10 should give you a more holographic sound because it's a tube integrated amplifier while extending that high frequency because it has an airy presentation and a little bit of a brighter presentation which balances perfectly out with that refinement compartment of the R700 making it a more enjoyable speaker in the mid-range and high frequency. And it has plenty of bass kick for a tube amplifier which you really cannot compromise with the R700. The bass is tight and extended just as with a solid state amplifier in my opinion. So it's a perfect match. So I'm going to include this integrated amplifier in the giveaway as well as a Zen streamer from iFi that I recently picked up and I really, really like it. And yes, that makes an entire complete system for streaming. And all you have to do is click the link below and comment about what you saw and what you liked about it, what you disliked about it, I don't care. And that's it. This giveaway will run for the next 10 days and it will be over and we will pick the winner. So without further ado, let's go and talk about the build quality. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys in person here, very raw, <laughs> but uh, look at these speakers. They're huge, they're humongous. And you can't really appreciate the finish in video. Like the finish is really well done. Um, I would say like it's like the best finish I've seen under $2,000 period. Like this finish, I was kind of dreading it because I wanted the wood finish. They do sell wood finish. But I mean, seeing it in person, like there's like some texture to it. And this uh, matte black finish would go really well in a home theater because there's no reflection for TVs, projectors. It's really well done for home theater. And honestly, I don't. I think I think you can get away without a subwoofer. Obviously, you would want a subwoofer for a home theater. But anyways, the tweeter is a classic poke tweeter that we've seen and we you know sometimes love, sometimes don't. <laughs> Mid-range, same deal. We've seen it on multiple Polk speakers. They're quite decent. Uh, not the best drivers here, obviously. They're all you know pretty cheap drivers because of the price range. But they've done a great implementation, and that's what's important. You can put you know thousand dollars worth of drivers in speakers, but if it's not implemented well, then what's the point, right? So we have two dual. I believe these are seven-inch drivers, seven or eight-inch. Doesn't really matter because these output tons of bass and if you can get away with you know using sl smaller drivers doing the same thing that's that's all fine by me of course you get the poke logo there and uh what i really wanted to show you is the bottom here I'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to pick this up because of the lighting here but i'll bump up the iso and here you can see it's a very unique down firing port design so this doesn't have a normal port um, like other floor standards do or bookshelves do this is a down firing port with a very in, in interesting you know turbine kind of design that's uh, protruding in to the port 
So I'll put some pictures here for you to see what it actually looks like in the diagram. But this allows for something very interesting to happen. And that is what I'm gonna explain right now. So if you go to the back, uh, you get the binding post. Again, no ports, no ports, all right? Uh, I guess with strong lighting, you can kind of see the, the, the finished uh, steam here. I just noticed that. Can you see that steam? Like, yeah, that's expected of a speaker at this price range, but this is under very heavy lighting. I have a big light here. And so you get the binding post, but mainly what I wanted to talk to you guys about is this. I can place the speakers really close to the wall, really close to the wall. Now this, this distance is, looks pretty far um, on camera, but it's not that far. And I've actually placed it closer. This is just for filming purposes. It looked nicer because of the background there. But honestly, I've placed it closer to the wall behind it and it does not get boomy. It does not elevate the bass or make it muddy. Yes, you get more bass output because of room gain if you put it into the corner. But this speaker does not, it does not get boomy. And my room is not that big. It's like a medium sized room. So while it has tremendous bass output for even small, medium and large rooms, in my opinion, it does not get boomy because of that port design. And you, we've seen this kind of port design on the bookshelf speaker too, on the back, but that was still back ported. This is down firing and making it even more of that effect, you know, effective on the floor stander. And they did this on purpose because I bet you, they're like, oh, we made a floor stander and now the base is gonna be too boomy if we place it close to the wall because it has way more output than a, you know, than an R200 bookshelf speaker. So now we're gonna make it down firing. And I mean, it's not like they've just designed this out of the blue, down firing ports to kind of make it more position friendly in a room has been done by Sonos Faber, by many other companies uh, in, in the recent you know, decade. And I think it's a great thing because it really does work. And it works really, really well on a speaker like this. It really does. It, it makes all the difference in the world because now it's not that sensitive to placement. I mean, just a few years back, it, I would have to have said, you know, it's a great speaker, but you have to pull it out of the room like four, six feet, you know, even eight feet to make sense for the bass to work. Not anymore, not anymore. And that's just wonderful. I love that. I love the feet as well because um, the little details like this, it's rubber. It's very well made like isolation rubber. It's not spikes, so it doesn't ruin my floor. Although uh, my floor has been ruined by many, many speakers that came in here. So I don't really care about that, but for you, you don't have to worry about that. And honestly, I I'm digging the look. And I'll put some cutout pictures here, but inside it's pretty well done as well. I'm not sure about the you know, quality of the crossover parts and so on, but you know, again, it's, it's a massive speaker at this price point. I'm not gonna expect like crazy parts. Now I haven't looked at it, but who knows, maybe I will be surprised. Um, anyways, in terms of placement, well, I like to have these speakers a little bit towed towards me. So I would like to have, you know, if I, if I have the choice, sit right between the tweeter and the woofer. I found that to be a good access point. And I like to have the speakers towed, you know, uh, towed directly to my sitting spot because it gives me better focus. And because this is a floor stander and not as, you know, pinpoint as the bookshelf like we talked about, it gives you a little bit more focus when you tow it directly at you. So that's how I would personally put it. Um, but you get you do get more soundstage if you tow it out into the room. But I, I feel like this speaker is a little bit compromised in the imaging department compared to its bookshelf speakers and other you know price range speakers in this category. So I think that towing it in does make more sense. But yeah, I've placed them close to the wall, you know, far from the wall, and they work both well. Just that um, I do prefer them out of the wall a little bit because it does give you more you know kind of easy depth of soundstage and all that stuff. It's always better to pull those speakers out into the room if you can. Sorry about the cable mess, by the way. It's usually not like this. <laughs> That's a lie, it's always like this. It's madness in the cells. Now in terms of gear matching, I found that, that these speakers do really well with the Dodge 10 that we're giving away in this video. So 
I found it really good because the bass, like I said, is as good as a solid state amplifier in my opinion. The R700 has incredible bass and it would be a total waste to not have a integrated amplifier or an amplifier that complements that. And the Dodge 10 complements it perfectly. And as I have told you, the mid-range and high frequency is a little bit to be desired when it comes to the R700 as well as the you know, overall imaging compartment. Well, with the Dodge 10, which tends to be a little bit on the brighter side of things and do have a little bit of that finesse, it does give more detail and more balanced sound when it comes to that mid-range and high frequency refinement, making it a more of an audiophile speaker, but at the same time, making it so much more holographic because of that tube design. Now, when it comes to another solid state amplifier of my liking, it was the Apollo. And I've been raving about this Apollo. I'm well, not raving, I haven't reviewed it yet, but I've been hinting at it every single video on how great it is with even my Sonos Faber high-end speakers. These are incredible with the R700. Maybe a, maybe a little bit too incredible because mind you, the Apollo already has that gritty grip you know, in the bass region, it really takes care of that bass region, even in bookshelf speakers. So with the R700, if when you are in a larger room, for example, it will be an incredible match because the bass output will be insane. So if you're all about that bass and you're in a larger space, then Apollo is my recommendation. However, in terms of mid-range and high frequency, it does compromise a little bit with the Apollo in comparison to the Doge 10, hence why I'm giving away the Doge 10. Also, Apollo is not mine, it's just here for a review. So, point aside, I've tried many integrated amplifiers and amplifier combinations, and I found these two to be the best out of the ones that I've tried in here so far. Now, in terms of the overall requirements of the speaker, I found that you do need some decent power, but they're not overly incredibly hard to drive, and you can get past with a tube amplifier, even like something like a deckwear. Now, the only reason I didn't choose deckwear for these speakers is because deckware is like three times the price of these speakers, so it doesn't really make sense to make that suggestion, one. And two, uh, the deckware does have a really nice mid-range and high frequency that takes these speakers to the next level, so it may be an upgrade path, but again, it's three times the price, so there's the two, it's the price. It's, it's the price. These go incredibly well with both tube and solid state amplifiers in my opinion. You really can't go wrong with these because I can't really name a gear that I would think that it would pair bad with these speakers. And I guess the reason for that is because these are so balanced speakers, they're kind of like a white canvas. If you want to, you can place a gear into the chain that elevates the mid-range and high frequency to your liking. Or if you want an all-rounder, like kind of like a Doge 10, which is the best solution here, uh, you can get something like that to pair it to make it, you know, kind of more mid-range and high frequency, uh, you know, detail and nuance while retaining the bass, which is the best case scenario. But there's a lot of other gear out there that would go well with this without a doubt. In fact, if you are on a really tight budget, I would recommend the Iota VX, which is about a grand thousand dollars which doesn't really translate well into the mid-range and high frequency because they're about the same nuance level but the bass is incredible and those don't have a lot of power but enough power to drive these incredibly well if you're really in a really tight budget we can even talk about like the power node that has an all-in-one solution for a streamer and amplifier and those sound decent with these speakers again but these speakers do scale they do scale. So if you want something really nice later on, then you can start with something like the Power Node or the Iota VX and you can go up to make it sound even better. And you will be pleasantly surprised. These speakers, despite its price range, can take it to the next level. And I believe that these, these deserve it. So this speaker really checks off a lot of the list. Number one, it sounds good. Number two, it's built really well. Number three, it's affordable. Number three, it's not Number four, it's not sensitive to placement. And number five, it is extremely easy to pair with many different types of gear to your liking. I'm not sure what I can ask for more in this price range for a speaker like this. It's an incredible speaker. It's a great speaker. It's a fantastic speaker. And I would say this is a speaker if I had a system around this speaker, like catering to this speaker, 
is a speaker that I would be down to own myself and can live with. And for those of you that lasted to the end of the video, here's a little bonus comparison. You may be asking, and I know some of you guys, I, some of you guys are gonna be asking in the comment section even before watching this part. It's Tecton's, Tecton comparison, all right? Big speakers, comparable, sure. So we're talking about like the Pendragon and the double impact, you know, speakers. So we have a double impact, right? So I reviewed these speakers a while back. These are great speakers, but I think they're more focused on mid-range and high frequency refinement, which makes it, you know, really close to the higher end speakers. The, the bass is more stronger on the pokes. And in fact, the bass is more stronger and textured on the Pendragons, and I made this comparison a while back. So the Pendragon not having as much of a refinement as the double impact, but still has really good refinement in the mid range and high frequency while having more bass texture and nuance and all that stuff. Well, the Pokes have more bass than either of the speakers, double impact or the Pendragon. However, the mid range and high frequency is, in my opinion, not as audiophile, not as good as the Pendragon and double impact. Now, however, I do think that that changes when you pair it with the Doge 10. I think it does go very close to the Pendragon level. I wouldn't say double impact level, but very close to the uh, Pendragon's mid-range and high frequency level. So there you go. There's a little comparison right there. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Remember, rock and roll never dies.